So now we've got our first lecture about the cardiovascular system. <clears throat> we've learned that the cardiovascular system is by far the most important transportation system in the human body. And in a way, we've already started talking about the cardiovascular system because <clears throat> in this transportation system, your blood, red blood cells and plasma, they really are like the little trucks that are carrying all the substances around in the cardiovascular system. So we've already begun. Let's look here at this image of uh, the thoracic cavity. And in the thoracic cavity, of course, uh, the ribs have been cut away to show the lungs underneath. And right here in the center of the thoracic cavity, you've got your heart. A lot of people think the heart is on the left side of the chest. It's really not. It's right here underneath the sternum. Now it's true that the left side of the heart is a little bit bigger than the right side of the heart. So it kind of sticks out to the left more than it sticks out to the right, but it's right there underneath your sternum. Uh, the heart is inside of a space called the mediastinum. That's the space between the lungs inside the thoracic cavity, but it's in its own little compartment that is called uh, the pericardium. And the pericardium, if I could instantly poof, make yours disappear, you would notice right away. Why? Because this area right here, where the aorta and the vena cava are, that's where the heart is kind of attached. But the heart is really busy doing these big contractions and relaxations. And, and if you didn't have a pericardium, your heart would be bouncing around inside of your chest, bumping against your lungs and stuff, but you don't feel your heart beat. And the reason you don't is that that sac that the heart is in, the pericardium, it is attached right down here to that major muscle of breathing called the diaphragm that separates your thoracic cavity from your abdominal cavity. Here's a closer look at the pericardium. Remember that the pericardium has got two layers it's got one layer, I'm going to try and outline it here, right there. That's one layer that is just really tightly adhered to the surface of the heart, so I couldn't peel it off, for example. And then there's a little space that's shown by the dark line here. And that dark area, that's filled with a little bit of slippery fluid um, that lubricates the area to make it so that there's no friction when the heart moves. And then there's this outer layer. The outer layer is called the parietal pericardium. The inner layer is called the visceral pericardium. And uh, yeah, that's enough about the pericardium. Now, as I'm discussing the heart with you, I'm going to be asking you at first to think of it as a two-sided pump and later to be thinking about it as a top part and a bottom part. Let's start with this concept of a two-sided pump. In a very real sense, each side of your heart, the right side and the left side, is a pump. Uh, one of those pumps is designed to push blood to your lungs. The other pump is designed to push blood to the rest of your body. And those two pumps, boom, they just happen to be attached here in the center. The side of the side of the heart that pumps blood to your lungs is called the pulmonary circuit or pulmonary circulation. Um, everything lung in in anatomy is referred to as pulmonary and the right side of your heart is going to be pumping blood to your lungs. The systemic circulation or the systemic circuit is the left side of your heart and that is pumping blood to everywhere else in your body. It's kind of like this. Let's imagine for right now that the lungs are like a big warehouse and the job of your cardiovascular system is to pick things up from that big warehouse and to transport them to all of the cells of your body. And not only does it transport good stuff to all the cells of your body, but it's going to pick up the trash that those cells make and transport that trash back to the warehouse. So the job of these trucks, and remember the trucks are your blood, plasma, and the red blood cells, is to pick up oxygen, take it to all the cells of the house, and then the cells will go, thank you 
for the oxygen. Hey, could you take away this trash I made, this carbon dioxide? And the truck is going to take the carbon dioxide back to the warehouse to be disposed of. All right. This is going to happen over and over and over again. Uh, the side of your heart right here that has got blood in it that's filled with oxygen, ready to deliver it to all the cells of the body, that side of your heart is the left side of the heart and it pushes out blood to all the cells of the body, your brain, your liver, your toes. And then it picks up trash and it comes back to the heart. And right here, the, the side of your heart that's filled with blood that has got not very much oxygen, but a lot of this trash called carbon dioxide, it is going to be, that blood is going to be pushed to the lungs by the right side of the heart. So the right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs. Here's the right side of the heart. Remember, whenever you're looking at a model of the heart, the right side is as if the person is standing in front of you, right? So here's the right side of the heart. It's pumping blood to the lungs and that blood uh, picks up oxygen. Now it's filled with oxygen. And so it's coming back to the left side of the heart and then the left side of the heart is going to, the left side of the heart, oops, the left side of the heart is going to pump the blood all the way to every other part of the body, okay? Um, the left side is called the systemic circulation or the systemic circuit, the right side going to the lungs and all that, the pulmonary circuit. Here's one thing I'd like you to notice, that reliably arteries have blood that is red and veins have blood that is blue with a very important exception that you need to remember and that important ex exception is the pulmonary circuit so here this blood vessel right here well this is the pulmonary trunk these are the pulmonary arteries notice their blood is blue not red now coming back from the lungs, this is the pulmonary veins. Notice that blood, it's in a vein, but it's red, not blue. Lucky for us, this is the only exception to the rule, the only exception. And we will talk about why in just one moment, okay? So let's look here at the entire uh, cardiovascular system. There are a few things that you're going to meet, need to be able to do that's um, depicted here in this one slide. One thing is you need to be able to answer questions like, blood just left the vena cava, where did it go next? Blood just left the left ventricle, where did it go next, right? That's one set of questions. What's the entry door to the right ventricle? What's the exit door from the right ventricle? You'll need to answer questions like that. You'll also need to answer questions like, where is blood high in oxygen and low in CO2? Where is it low in oxygen and high in CO2? And really all of that information is here on this slide, kind of in code. But let's start with the basics. Let's start with the path that blood takes as it goes floating through uh, the cardiovascular system. Now, uh, you need to be able to memorize this. And this is just kind of like memorizing the map of the area where we live. If I told you that I'd pay you $10,000 to get this package to LAX, you would know how to do it, right? And if I told you, oh, the 105 is closed, you would go, oh, no problem. I'll just take the 91 or I'll just go down to the 405 and take that up, right? You could do it because you got the map in your head. This is another nap, map that I'm asking you to put into your head. And let's start here. We don't. We could start anywhere, but let's start here at the right atrium. Ooh, the heart, here we've got the heart. You will have learned in lab that the heart has got four chambers. The two upper chambers, this one and this one, they are called the atria. Each one is an atrium. And the lower chamber, each one is called a ventricle. These are the ventricles. We're gonna start up here at the right atrium. I know it's on the left side of this picture, but if a person were standing in front of you, this would be their right hand. So that is their right atrium. Blood is going to go from the right atrium into the right ventricle. 
This is one pump from the heart. It's going to leave the light right ventricle through the pulmonary trunk into the pulmonary arteries and go to all of the capillaries of the lung. Then it's going to be heading back to the heart in pulmonary veins. We always call the blood vessels that are heading back towards an atrium, they call, we call those veins. And those veins are gonna drop blood off into the left atrium. From the left atrium, it's going to go down into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, it's going to go into the aorta. Smaller arteries and smaller arteries drop blood off into all of the capillaries of the body and come back through the vena cava into the right atrium, right? Now notice that once the blood, the trucks, have dropped off their oxygen and picked up the trash, carbon dioxide, that the blood has got more of a blue appearance. So the blood coming back here is blue, the blood here is blue, the blood in the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary artery is still blue because it hasn't had a chance to pick up oxygen yet. It doesn't pick up oxygen until it gets to the lungs, which is why blood in the pulmonary arteries is depicted as blue and blood in the pulmonary veins is depicted as red. And blood in all of these arteries on the systemic circulation is red because it's high in oxygen, low in CO2, um, until it drops off all of its oxygen and picks up the trash. And in all of the systemic veins, it's low in oxygen, high in CO2. All right, we're going to pause there and pick it up at the next video.